In the Sitara district of Maharashtra, there is a town called Koinanaga, which is located on the western Ghat side of Maharashtra. And in this town, the Koina river system is flowing, which is a tributary to the even larger river, that is the Krishna river. And across this river system, there was a dam which was constructed back in 1964, which is called as the Koina Dam. And in the year 1967, that is three years, uh, almost like three years after the construction of this dam, this dam site witnessed an earthquake. An earthquake of uh, magnitude 6.6 .6 struck the location. When this earthquake happened, uh, the dam was actually not affected by the event. There were only some minor cracks which were immediately addressed after the event. But at the same time, this event actually resulted in wide-scale destruction in most of the Koinanagar town. In fact, it has been said that almost like 80% of the houses which were actually built on the Koinada town was completely destroyed and killing about 177 people. So when this even happened, this raised a question to the geologists that we have in India. Did we actually witness a very rare phenomenon called as a reservoir induced seismicity? That is an earthquake being created by the construction of a huge dam. And some geologists think that it actually is a case of a reservoir induced seismicity. Myself Nanda Goben, Senior Faculty for Geography at Fortune IS, and welcome to the Fortune IS Masterclass Series. Before understanding the concept of this reservoir induced seismicity or the reservoir induced earthquake in a detailed fashion, we can just look on to as, as to how most of the earthquake that we can see in the vicinity are created. That is how most of the natural phenomena are actually found to be created. So most of the earthquake which we actually see in the vicinity that you might have heard often uh, over the years are mainly created by the interaction of what is called as a tectonic plate. So in order to understand the concept of tectonic plate, you can imagine that the earth is divided into three different layers, that is the crust, mantle and core, which many of you might already know. And the crust region, that is the first layer of the earth, and the uppermost part of mantle, this region is collectively called as a lithosphere. And we believe that this layer called as a lithosphere is found to be floating on top of another layer called as the asthenosphere. Now the details of lithosphere, asthenosphere, etc. is not that much importance for us. But what you need to understand is that this upper layer, which I was referring to as the lithosphere, scientists believe that it is broken into a number of different fragments, which the scientists call as a tectonic plate. So the individual fragment of the lithosphere are often referred to as a tectonic plate. And it is believed that these tectonic plates could be interacting with one another. And most of the earthquake, which we have heard over the year, are actually said to be the result of the interaction of the tectonic plates only. For example, one such tectonic plate interaction, which most of you might have heard of before, is the collision between the Indian plate as well as the Eurasian plate, which resulted in the formation of the very famous Himalayan mountain system that we are having. Now, this same collision between the Indian plate and the Eurasian plate also resulted in a number of destructive earthquakes in that vicinity. Uh, some of you might have read these kinds of news articles that Himalayan region are actually prone to a relatively higher degree of earthquake. One such earthquake which I could be mentioning here uh, happened back in 2015, which is popularly referred to as a Nepal earthquake, in which an earthquake struck the country of Nepal. Uh, many buildings in the city of Kathmandu were completely destroyed and annihilated by this particular earthquake. You can see many such YouTube videos as well, which is talking about this particular destruction. And when this event happened, why this earthquake happened? Very simple to understand because the Indian plate collided with Eurasian plate and the resultant stresses only created this mechanism. So most of the earthquake that you can see in the vicinity are actually said to be created by the tectonic plate interactions only. And these kinds of earthquake are what we generally call as a tectonic earthquake. Uh, in fact, these are one of the highest and one of the most destructive earthquakes which could be created around the world. And at the same time, uh, if you think about some human factors inducing earthquake, which we often call as induced seismicity, sometimes certain human activities also could be inducing earthquake in a particular location. So if you're generally comparing the tectonic earthquake, which is a natural phenomena, and induced earthquake, which are created by human activity, which we'll be discussing about in a short while, we generally observe that the more common and the more destructive one are the tectonic earthquakes only. 
the induced seismicity phenomena or the induced earthquake which are created by the human activities are generally found to be low intensity earthquakes only. And I am again uh, specifically highlighting this particular point, uh, whenever you are hearing the word earthquake, most often it will be created by this tectonic earthquake phenomenon only. In fact, the 2004 Indian Ocean tsunami was actually created by one such tectonic earthquake which happened near to the island of Sumatra, which is part of the Indonesian island. When it comes to the induced seismicity, I mentioned that induced seismicity is actually an earthquake created by some kind of human activity. And some of the common human activities that we often talk about, which can lead to earthquake. Uh, one such example I could be highlighting is the detonation of a nuclear bomb. For example, if you're detonating an atomic bomb, that will be releasing huge amounts of energy, which can again lead to the shaking of the earth. Because after all, the word earthquake simply means the shaking of the earth only. So rather than the collision and interaction of the tectonic plate, it could also be created by the detonation of this atomic bomb or you could be having a collapse of an underground mine. Multiple activities could be triggering, multiple human activities could be triggering earthquake mechanism. And those kinds of earthquakes are what we call as an induced seismicity. Within the induced seismicity, so we mentioned the fact that induced seismicity can be created by a number of human activity. One such specific human activity which can lead to this earthquake mechanism is the construction of a huge dam. The weight of the water which will be accumulated behind the dam that could be exerting a lot of stresses onto the underlying earth surface which could sometimes be triggering an earthquake in that location which is what we call as a reservoir induced seismicity that is an earthquake being created by the construction of a huge dam. Now one of the recent examples which I can talk about uh, in which this discussion of the reservoir induced seismicity again came to the forefront was the case of the construction of a Three Gorges Dam. There is a very famous dam called as the Three Gorges Dam, which is constructed across the Yangtze River of China. So Yangtze River is actually one of the longest river that we have in the world. In fact, it is the third longest river in the world after Nile and Amazon. Across the Yangtze River that we have in China, so when they completed this dam, uh, first of all, just to get a size, a comparison of this particular dam with uh, one of the dam that we have in Kerala, so that you will be able to appreciate the size of this particular structure. The Idiki Arch Dam that we have in Kerala, which in itself is a mammoth structure. If you have seen that in person, you can actually understand the size of that particular dam. Idiki Dam has an installed capacity of about 780 megawatt. But at the same time, the Three Gorges Dam, which is constructed in Yangtze, is said to be having an installed capacity of 22,500 megawatt, making it the largest hydroelectric project in the world. It's like extremely bigger construction. Uh, it is so big that the construction of this dam is even said to have slowed down the rotation speed of the earth. So you can just imagine the size of this particular structure which has been created. Now, why am I talking about this particular dam in this discussion right now? After the construction of this dam, which is completed back in 2003, the instances of landslide as well as some of the destructive earthquake is said to be on the rise in the immediate vicinity. Now, China officially says that though the construction of the dam might have created some ecological imbalances, but at the same time, they're denying the possibility of the earthquake being created by the construction of this dam. Anyway, after this construction of dam only, the discussion of the reservoir induced seismicity again came into the forefront in the international media as well. Even in the case of Koina Nagar Dam earthquake, which I mentioned in the beginning, uh, the official stand is that some of the geologists who were actually part of the project actually deny the possibility of the weight of the dam actually leading to earthquake. When I talk about this reservoir induced seismicity, naturally there arises a question, is this something that we should be concerned about? Uh, the good news is that there are actually a lot of good news uh, in this particular discussion as well. When I talk about the reservoir induced seismicity, most of the so-called such reports which has been uh, highlighted around the world were mostly of very low intensity phenomena only. In fact, I can say that major events are extremely rare, very, very rare in nature. And you have to understand the fact that there are more than 50,000 dams which are constructed in different parts around the world. That's like a huge number. And there are very few numbers, for example, I can say that there are only like handful of examples where the reservoir induced earthquake turned out to be pretty destructive, etc. and all. Uh, probably the Koinanaga earthquake will be standing as one of the most destructive, uh, if at all, if it is related to the reservoir induced earthquake, probably that will be one of the most destructive one. So what I'm trying to convey is that it is a 
pretty rare phenomena, very rare actually in nature. In fact, some of the scientists even went on to say that the stresses exerted by the reserve of water, this is nothing compared to the stresses which can be created by the collision of a tectonic plate. In fact, many scientists also say the fact that those regions which are said to have been experiencing this reservoir induced earthquake, such as the Koinanaga that we have in India, might have already had some underlying geological factors which is actually increasing the possibility of earthquake, such as the development of a fracture in the underlying rock system. So most of the region which are said to be reporting this event might have already had some underlying factor. At worst, a reservoir could be only advancing an earthquake which would have happened otherwise as well. So just to summarize, if you are a person who is living near to the a dam construction site, you don't need to worry about this particular phenomena at all because there are very, such, very few such examples which have happened around the world. That's it and thank you for taking out your time to watch the video.